Hello, everyone. Welcome to Talk of the Town. I'm James Milan, and we are here today for a DEI update, DEI being, of course, diversity, equity, and inclusion. And I'm talking to our town's director of DEI, Jillian Harvey, a familiar, now getting to be familiar face, happily, uh, for uh, ACMI viewers. Jill, good to see you. I'm sure April has started like uh, March ended and like every month seems to be for you uh super busy um yeah. so as always we really appreciate we know it takes a little bit of effort to carve out the time to talk to us so thanks yeah no problem it's always a pleasure <laughs> oh i hope so it is for us for sure um so you know this is a dei update we there is always action in uh your sphere um but i wanted to start by just asking you connecting back to something we were talking about back in March, um, and that is uh, the project involving, you know, that you're working with the library on, Elevating uh, Voices of Color, which is, well, I'll let you explain uh, again briefly uh, what the project is all about, okay. but uh, just wanting to get an update on where that that is at. Yeah, so the Elevating Arlington's Voices of Color, it's an archive project with the Robbins Library. Um, so we're still in the phase of gathering some content so that we can launch the archive um, so folks can have some examples of what exactly to submit. Um, we're also in the process. We had a few events um, that took place that were great. Um, some workshops, a writing workshop that I participated in. Um, and then our featured artist was Charles Coe, a poet, and he's having actually another session. Uh, I think it's this month on the 27th. Um, so that I think registration is capped at, I wanna say 20, um, because it's more of an interactive conversation. Um, but those workshops were phenomenal and I'm yeah. in the process of planning some more um, throughout the rest of the year, looking to be bi-monthly to allow um, community members to participate and start to think about how they can contribute to this archive. Um, so it's underway. I'm hoping that it will go live soon once we have a few more examples. Um, I'll be contributing my own as well. <laughs> um, but I'm really excited that it's just an ongoing project and I'm hoping that by next year we'll have a larger celebration around it once it hits the year mark. Yeah, I hope that that is the case as well. And I have to just note that um, there's something in a sense, sadly ironic about the fact that um, the whole point of assembling uh, this collection, of course, is to give voice to, uh, to to folks or to voices that, you know, we don't hear from often enough. And the fact that it's taking a little bit longer to get enough contributions, again, seems, um, you know, sadly apropos. Uh, in a way. And one hopes that, you know, as you get more in and as people do have a chance to see what kinds of stuff they can contribute themselves, that 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 the pace will accelerate. accelerate. I, I know that's what you're hoping for, I'm sure. Yeah, definitely. Um, this come we're speaking to you in the first week of April and uh, this coming Monday on April 8th, I know there's a, you know, a, a an event that has come together in the last, I imagine, in the last uh, couple of weeks because um, it is uh, specifically is, is looking at uh, a particular, uh, the, the situation for a particular population, and that is our Asian Pacific Island population. Um, so tell us about that. Yeah, definitely. Um, so the month of April, I was planning to do um, some programming anyways, um, but the events that took place in Georgia kind of um, sped that up. So my office and the Human Rights Commission will be holding a Stand Against Racism, elevating Asian American Pacific Islander community voices. Um, and it's Monday the 12th. <laughs> today's, or I think today's the 8th. Oh, um, I'm sorry, Monday. you're right. <laughs> no worries, <laughs> it's Monday. Right. Um, at seven. So that will be a panel discussion um, with some leadership members from the Chinese Progressive Association in Massachusetts, um, the Massachusetts Asian Pacific Islander Civic Action Network, uh, who else? The Massachusetts Asian American Commission and some of our youth from the high school. Um, 
So that topic will be discussing, you know, how we can stand against hate and really address some of the larger issues around misogyny and fetishization of Asian women in popular culture. Um, so that event is taking place on Monday. Um, and then there's some other things going on, which I can lead into um, for the whole month of April. And so, um, yeah, the, before, wanted, before you yeah. do, excuse me, and thank you yeah. so much for that correction about the date. Let's make sure we have that right. That's Monday, April 12th. Um, and uh, I did just want to say that thank you uh, for bringing uh, the world here to Arlington, by which I mean, um, in the same way as the national conversation has turned um, in the wake of the lamentable uh, events in, in, in Atlanta has turned to the fact that we don't pay it that much attention, that when we think about issues of diversity and equity, et cetera, very often we're framing those legitimately, of course, in terms of black and brown, uh, you know, what, what, the, what black and brown skin folks have had to deal with for a long time. And this is a population that suffers, in, in, as we have all learned or relearned in recent weeks, suffers many from many of the same uh, kinds of, uh, you know, mistreatment, uh, historical um, and ongoing. So thank you um, for, again, reflecting the reckoning that's now including uh, another population that's deservedly uh, in focus uh, and, and bringing that right here to Arlington. Yeah, of course, of course. Okay, um, but you had mentioned, yes, of course, that that there will be uh, kind of longer term and bigger scope events uh, to talk about here coming up in April. Yeah, so um, the Alliance of YWCA's of Massachusetts holds every April their Stand Against Racism campaign. Um, so this year I've organized um, throughout the month for a number of town departments who have time and are able to participate to hold internal conversations about race. Um, so YW does provide a list of curated content, um, but departments also have the option if they wanna hold discussions based on topics of their choice, that that's an option as well. Um, so myself, my admin, um, we're making a big effort to attend as many of these conversations as we can. Um, the first one kicked off on April 1st, which was great. <laughs> um, so it's just a chance for staff members to start to explore issues of racial equity and learn how to advance um, racial equity within their work. And also to just start to, like I say over and over again, we really need to normalize talking about race. So this is a great way and I'm really glad um, most departments heads have been really receptive about this opportunity. In addition to that, there's, um, we're, we've provided pledge boards for departments so that they will put on those boards, uh, you know, statements, commitments in how that they will stand against racism and make a change. Um, so later in the month, once I get things organized, um, there'll be some social media campaign that folks will be able to see, and you'll be able to see some of these boards and the commitments that are made by town staff. Um, so I'm really excited that we're doing this, and I, it's a large-scale thing. I've, I've participated in this campaign in the past, um, but not as big, but I'm really excited that this is happening. Um, so that's what's going to be going on all month of April. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if, uh, without wanting to put uh, pressure on you or uh, asking you to, you know, uh, put the, the pressure on anybody else, um, I am curious, uh, you had mentioned that most department heads are, you know, have been supportive and collaborative, you know, around this idea. Uh, in general, with the work that you're doing, normalizing, as you said, conversations mm -hmm. around race, bringing those in to all the different departments uh, operating in town and to our, you know, our government, our, our local government um, in all of its various guises and arms. Um, have, how has it been in, for you uh, in terms of, you know, have you met much resistance there? Uh, if so, how do you deal with that? Um, mm. just, just curious. Yeah, no, I really haven't been met with resistance. It's more so helping folks figure out the logistics of how to do these things. Um, COVID has definitely made it more difficult. I know, for example, one department doesn't really have a time when all staff members are ever together, whether it's virtual or in person. 
Um, so finding that time to hold, you know, one to two hours to have a deeper conversation is a little tough. Um, so it's really not so much resistance. They want to be able to do this, but figure out how to do it and have a have it be meaningful as well. Um, because for me, I don't want folks to just be given something and then not know where to go with it. Um, you know, here, read this article, but then there's no follow up. That's not the point. It's mm -hmm. to either watch a film or a video or TED talk, read an article, and then walk through some discussion questions that are going to make you think a little bit deeper about what you just experienced. So I'm working with folks who've had some of those kind of scheduling logistical challenges to figure out what's going to work, whether it's one-on-one -on -one conversations with folks. And again, I'm making myself available um, for that and for any way that I can support them. Um, but yeah, for the most part, it's been really great, <laughs> just great responses and feedback. And um, I would say almost no resistance, which is a good sign. <laughs> right, right. And, and I mean, that's that is that is great to hear. Yeah. Um, Jill, we have, uh, you know, we we began to talk with you somewhat regularly, uh, you know, about a year ago or so. Um, yeah. And one of the first topics of conversation last spring and into the summer uh that was an ongoing thing was the series of community conversations that you mm -hmm. facilitated last year which i know were an enormous uh task that you took on um, in terms of organizing them they covered a variety of different issues and were absolutely uh vitally important to our community beginning to make progress in a, in a number of the areas uh, that you were addressing I understand that you are uh, willing to take on uh, and uh, the you know a new series of community conversations this year and hopefully uh, each year going forward from now. Uh, first of all, um, thanks uh, for <laughs> being willing to do that. Uh, as I said, it, it it seemed like an enormous amount of work for you, um, but um, you know, tell us what you've got in mind. Yeah, um, so it's definitely a task I'm taking on. <laughs> I would like to somewhat institutionalize the community conversations as some type of end of spring, early summer programming that we know we can look forward to each year. Um, so I'm trying to get a little bit ahead of that and look to revisit some of the topics that we touched upon last year. Um, it'll be a little bit different setup as I learned a lot from the speed that we went last year and just just the logistics that were needed. Um, so what I'm looking to do is do some more partnerships with different departments in town. Um, and I've already had a significant amount of folks reach out saying they would be interested in such and such topics. So I'm really excited that the partnerships are there. It's definitely made it a little easier on me. <laughs> um, but also just again, that you know the desire to be a part of these conversations is there and folks want to talk about things, which is great. That's the whole point. Um, so yeah, I'm hoping mid-May that we'll be kicking things off. I'm getting, you know, the different topics lined up and it probably won't be at the same speed and intensity of last year, <laughs> um, but more so um, just being able to provide these educational conversations for folks again to tune into because the community at large is along this racial equity journey. So <laughs> anything I can do to assist um, in providing more resources and education for folks is what I'm looking to do. Yeah, there there seemed to be two really big messages from what I could tell coming out of uh, the conversations last year, one of which was a, a kind of collective gratitude and recognition for the need uh, for these for for these things. And again, um, the second being, uh, as as you've already alluded to, the fact that 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 they were a start, a start to something that needed to be continued. Um, everybody had the sense, I think, at the end of each individual session, and then looking back on them all together, that um, there's more. There's just so much more uh, that that still needs to be gotten out on the table. Lots of us need to listen. Um, Etc. So great development um, that this is uh, going to be continuing, and and as you said, uh, I guess the plan is to institutionalize this as part of our annual schedule around this time mm -hmm. of year. Um, I 
I wish I could foresee, I'm sure you do too, mm -hmm. a time when it wouldn't, we wouldn't need to uh, mm -hmm. do that, but it sure is beyond the horizon as far as I can see right now. Yeah, it's definitely going to be something that continues, unfortunately. Um, but if we all get on board and start to make the changes that are needed, please, sometime down the road, we won't have to have these conversations. But for now, it's definitely, um, it's vital. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, uh, there's a, I'll just briefly say, and, and then I'll let you go. It's interesting because uh, recently I had a conversation with uh, a, a couple of members from the planning department about the net zero action plan here in Arlington that's, you know, that has a goal of net zero emissions and then has an end date, 2050, right? And, and this is an action plan for how to get from here to there. And it's interesting to contrast that with the project that you are involved in, which again, just feels like we know where we'd like to get to and we we aspire to get there but there's no telling uh how long uh it's it's gonna take yeah definitely that's i think we all know where we need to get but like you said there's no there's no guidebook at this time um we're in the process of contributing to that you know we're working on an equity action plan but this type of work, racial equity work, is a lifelong journey. And I've said it before, I'm going to keep saying it. Um, it's not going to end in my lifetime, <laughs> maybe not anyone else's, <laughs> but um, it's definitely once you're committed, you're in it for life. So that's what we have to look forward to each day. Keep trying. Well, you do keep pushing that, that ball forward, I have to say, Jillian. So um you know we appreciate it and again thanks for the time uh let me ask you before we let you go uh, yeah. <laughs> anything that has occurred to you while we talk um that you you know wanted to mention before we we sign off um i don't think so i think i covered all of the main things um if anything big comes up i'm sure i'll let you know about it and we can do it in another update <laughs> great that sounds wonderful. And we look forward, of course, to talking to you again in early May uh, mm -hmm. is our is our hope and plan, um, at which point, you know, um, you'll know a little bit more about the community conversation series and we can delve into that a little bit more. And I have no doubt there will be any number of other projects uh, to talk about and activities to talk about at that time. So yeah. good luck, um, as Thank always, <laughs> with, uh, with the big work and important work that you're doing. And thanks again for your time. Yes, thank you for having me. I have been speaking with Jillian Harvey, our Director of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion here in town for this DEI update as part of Talk of the Town. I'm James Milan. Thanks to Jill, and thanks to you for joining us, and we'll see you next time.